Uh, and then finally, again, thank you uh, for your generosity and giving to the ministries of Bethany Lutheran. Uh, your support during all of this time has helped us continue to serve in unexpected ways, ways that we hope to continue in some form or fashion once we get to the under, other side of this pandemic. And so now, as we continue our worship service, we Hold will... it, hold it, hold it, Pastor. That wasn't the last announcement. Uh-oh. Yeah. We have something really important that was in this, this week's Standard Radio Post. It says we have a country preacher in our midst today, and that young man has got 20 years under his belt since ordination. Wow, maybe you better fill us in who that is. It's that right there, Kevin Howe. That's him. And it says right here in the Standard, at his prior parish, he went out in the country to visit one of those parishioners, and he drove up on that farm, and right there by the gate, he spots this dead mule. So when he gets up to the, to the front door of the house, he says, Hey, Ernest, you've got a dead mule by the gate. And so Ernest smarts off right away. He says, Pastor, just so you know, that ain't no mule. That's a donkey. And instead of flapping your lips there, Pastor, you know it's your job to bury the dead. So why aren't you burying my dead mule? I mean, my dead donkey. Well, so Kevin being quick-witted and all, he says, well, before I bury the poor thing, I figure I better notify the next of kin, that being you, of course. <laughs> so what makes you think he's a country preacher? Well, again, it says in the paper, we called him from Cat Spring, Texas. And that congregation was so country. When Kevin led a Bible class, the first question, with that lesson about the two fish feeding the 5,000, first question from the class was, were they bass or were they catfish? And how did Jesus catch them? What kind of bait did he use? And what kind of a name for a town is Cat Spring? Sounds like a bouncing cat or something. Cat Spring? Well, I know before it was called Cat Spring, it was called Katzequel, which, of course, only the Germans would know what that meant, so they renamed it. But I don't know how it got its name. Pastor, can you tell us how it got a name like Cat Spring? Actually, yes, I can. Um, the story goes that when uh, early on some of the settlers were coming through, uh, there was a young man who bent down at a spring to get a drink of water, and he looked up and saw a mountain lion uh, there, and so <laughs> Cots and Quella, oh. a Cat Spring, and that, that's what they called it. All right. Oh, wow. Well... You know, Cliff's great-great-grandfather went to the Cabbage Patch one day, and he shot a skunk. Now, does that mean our name should have been Skunk Cabbage, Texas? <laughs> I'm glad we're Fredericksburg. Yeah. Say it in German. It may sound better in German. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do you say that Think German? Think that's a <laughs> Yeah, sure. Okay, but anyway, uh, I've heard that he does have a, a blog on the Internet called The Country Preacher Corner. And I bet he puts lots of biblical wisdom on that blog. I don't know about posting things on blog. The only thing I know about posts is fence posts. If you set them in a bog, they're going to fall right over. No, 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 Jonathan. Blog. B-L-O-G. Not bog. You can oh. have a blog on the internet. Yeah, well, we know Kevin is quite the internet wizard. He does a lot of fancy stuff for here at Bethany. For us on the internet, yippee ki -yay. he's both country and internet savvy. So if I Google Country Preacher Corner, I can still find his blog? Oh, you bet you can. And uh, you'll even find a picture of him there wearing a fancy country hat preaching. I think he's got a history of both farmers and preachers in his background. Yeah, yep. yeah. Well, I remember a sermon, too, when he said he likes a good rain. He just doesn't like a rain that's too wet. That sounds like Fredericksburg Deutsch. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and I remember that sermon on Proverbs 17 where he said, Never approach a bull from the front, a horse from the rear, or a fool from any direction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Proverbs doesn't say anything about bulls or horses. Who was I to question his sermon? I mean, that's just not me. He's the pastor. 
You know, we had that sermon on Matthew 25 uh, where he talked about separating the sheep from the goats. And he said even a city boy could spot a goat in the middle of a flock of sheep. <laughs> yeah, and he and Donna bought that big ranch out at Rock Springs. And Kevin just figured he'd hunt on it till he was old and then he'd sell it and double their money. The only way I doubled my money is fold it over on itself and stick it back in my pocket. <laughs> Yeah, you know, one day the whole family went out to Rock Springs and there was a stray dog that came up and so it started chasing its tail and Kevin is intently watching that dog for 10 minutes. And he says, boy, they sure are easily entertained. And the girl said, dad, you've just watched a dog chase its tail for 10 minutes. So who's the one easily entertained? <laughs> yeah, and remember that sermon about the rupture? And he asked the congregation here, you know, is there anything biblical about the rupture? And I jumped up and I said, I don't know whether it's in the Bible, but I know when I lift it too heavy, I got that surgery on my rupture. <laughs> Jonathan, pastor said rapture, not rupture. He did preach a good one from Matthew about don't start building a barn until you know you can finish it. And his country wisdom turned into don't poke a stick into a hornet's nest unless you know you can outrun the hornets. Yep, that's the same country wisdom. And he's passed that on to his kids too. You know, They were out there in West Texas and Kira and Kaylee both said they were thirsty. And so little Kevin pipes in and says, little too late now to think about digging a well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Texas humor. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that Kevin repeats himself a lot? I bet he's told us a dozen times that Christianity is not about what we have done, but about what Jesus has already done for us. Oh yeah, he does. Uh, once again, that's that country wisdom in Kevin. He, um, he's seen that rancher working to get the, the neighbor's bull back into the pasture where he belongs, and that bull runs past that gate a dozen times. Can't get it through. Thirteenth attempt, that bull runs right through the gate. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't that last one that was something magic. It was all those attempts that came before. And I think Kevin sees it, that maybe Christians don't always see the truth in the gospel the first time around. So he keeps leading us to that gate again and again. Thank you, Pastor Kevin, for 20 years of shepherding. You're going to get us through that gate yet. Thank you. That's cool. Glad you happened by today. <laughs> yeah, we left the ranch. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to invite our congregational president, Judy Jones, to come forward. While she's coming forward, I'm going to direct your attention to the screen. We got a few pictures. Um, yeah, there's the country preacher. There's the day of his ordination. Where was that place? That's St. John Lutheran Church of Robstown. Of and the, Robstown. The gentleman standing uh, to my left, right behind, kind of slick back hair, that's my grandfather. That okay. The, uh, and right next to your grandfather, to our right, is uh, my Jeff uncle. Thompson. Is oh, it? yeah. Jeff Thompson is right behind me. A former Bethany pastor was right, part he's, of he's that. He's right behind me standing there. And th this oh. looks like a kid. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah I was young. <laughs> looks 18. That's Paul Krupicka on the left and Pastor Greg Ronning on the, the right. Uh, Pastor Greg had a liturgy at Texas Lutheran called the Alleluia Liturgy, and I had to have that at my ordination, so he uh, came down and did that. Right. There you are with uh, Jeff. Pastor yes. Jeff again, a former Bethany pastor. And Jim You Bennett. and the bishop, yeah. Bishop Jim Bennett. There's the fireman. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I did that sermon. Yes. There you are getting wet. That was instead of a, a time of the ice bucket challenge, Yeah. you had water challenge. Well, I told the congregation that, oh yeah, there's me and my Mustang. Yeah, <laughs> cool. <laughs> there you are with kids. Hmm, some of them look familiar. Judy, come forward. Okay. Pastor Kevin, we want you to know how much we appreciate you as you've dedicated 20 years to the ministry of our Lord and Savior. Today, Bethany offers gratitude for the faithfulness that you show to love and to care for each of us at Bethany 
and to help us grow in the knowledge and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Kevin, you have consistently inspired us in both good and trying times. For your ministerial anniversary, Bethany is happy to present you with a $500 Amazon gift card for you to order books or other items that you may wish. Oh, jeez. Thank you. I, it's like a hug. Wait, no, can't do that. <laughs> oh, jeez. So we want you to know how much we appreciate you and may the Lord keep you in his care as we look forward to many more years of your leadership. Thank you. Oh, man. Thank you all. Thank you, Judy. Oh, man. man. No, 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 stay put. Oh, There's boy. more. All right. <laughs> We're going to see if this works. A video message. I've got to turn this on first. Good morning, folks. I'm Bob Hartman. My wife, Karen, and I have known Pastor Kevin Haug and his family for now on to 16 years. 14 of those years were in a pew on Sunday at St. John Lutheran Church in Cat Spring, where a pastor was pouring out 728 sermons. I know, I know. It makes me sleepy just thinking about it. And as for that pew, it was left of the center aisle, three rows back from the front, and two aisle seats. Actually, it was our pew. And I know many of you folks at Bethany can relate to that. And everything went along fine until our little congregation grew and pastor instituted another service. Well, as luck would have it, one morning we decided to sleep in and go to the late service. Walked in through the doors of the church and lo and behold, there was somebody sitting in our pew. So, not only do these guys like Pastor Kevin and Pastor Casey have to be adept at spreading God's word, they also have to be experts at conflict resolution too. Over the years, I observed that Pastor Kevin, on occasion, would modify his style or delivery uh, every now and again. And some of those uh, uh, changes were very innovative. But I have to tell you this, that uh, he remained singularly focused on preaching, teaching, and proclaiming the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. In that aspect of his ministry, folks, he never wavered a bit. I could tell you a hundred stories about Pastor Kevin Haug, but it would cost you a lunch, and I'm told that I'm not exactly a cheap date. So I'll tell you one or two and then move on. A couple of years ago, Pastor instituted uh, an innovation that I thought was quite good, and there's a personal aspect to it that I'll share with you. He'd be going along through his sermon, and uh, more than halfway through it, not all the way to the end, but a little somewhere in between, all of a sudden he would say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but will have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world should be saved through him. There you have it, two years, every sermon. And let me tell you how that affected us. Uh, my wife, our grandson Christian and I, after services, would head towards beautiful downtown Sealy's, Texas for lunch. And on the way, we would have a rather animated discussion about pastor's sermon, saying like, did you know when he was gonna say it? Could you connect uh, John 3:16 to his message of the day? And so we had a great time. And if his goal was to instigate a discussion about his sermon, it certainly worked in our, uh, in our family. Uh, but there's a kicker to this story that I have to share with you. On Ho Holy Thursday one year, we were sitting in that darkened sanctuary. Uh, Pastor Kevin was concluding the uh, service. And from up there in that uh, dimly lit pulpit, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And before he could finish that, tears were streaming down my cheeks. And I wasn't the only one uh, that was like that that night. Uh, that dude pounded on my head 
in my heart for two years. And in that dark place, in that particular moment in time, I connected the dots. And I'm grateful to Pastor Kevin Haug for that. Uh, my wife is a member of the prayer shawl ministry at uh, St. John Lutheran Church and has been for some time. Those ladies uh, meet at church and they used to do it on Monday mornings and have fellowship and uh, crochet prayer shawls for members of our congregation who are experiencing uh, physical challenges or spiritual challenges in their life. When they had gathered enough up together, they would uh, uh, bring them to church on Sunday and Pastor Kevin would bless them. Then they'd be in a closet ready for use. And normally, uh, Pastor Kevin would uh, come over to the gathering room where they uh, worked and visit with them and chat with them on a Monday morning. One Monday in December, Karen came home and said, uh, Pastor Kevin uh, visited with us this morning and indicated in his conversation that uh, he was gonna do something different in uh, our Christmas Eve service. And I said, well, I'll be there for sure. And we were, several hundred of us were there for that candlelight service on Christmas Eve. And that dude did indeed step outside the confounds of that pastoral box. I'll tell you two things about that service. Number one, the video was posted several days later to YouTube, like all of his sermons were. And over a course of a small amount of time, that sermon was viewed 11,000 times. The second thing I'll tell you is the sermon title. Merry Christmas, dilly dilly. So with that, I'd like to conclude with our heartfelt congratulations to Pastor Kevin W. Haug on completing his 20th year as a called and ordained pastor of the Lutheran Church. Love you, man. Bob Hartman from Cat Springs. I want to invite Pastor Kevin to come forward as well as Donna and the kids. And from our Bethany staff, <laughs> uh, we want to invite Lane Petty and Keisha Prem also to come forward. One more presentation. Chimney crickets. Talk about being surprised. <laughs> oh. So one of the pastors you saw in those ordination pictures, Pastor Paul Kropicka, had sent a letter to read on this day and a gift. He said, it's hard to believe we've known each other for over 24 years. How old are you? <laughs> I still remember the day you and your fiance, Donna, came into my office in Georgetown. Yeah, you yeah, were... yeah, you know, and it doesn't matter how old I am, it will always be at least 20 years younger than Younger you. than me, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Not 20, no. No, not quite 20. All right, still. all right. Anyway, I remember the day you and Donna came and you were about to start seminary. Donna was looking for a job. Little did I know the friendship that day would launch. Donna worked there like, yes, all through seminary at Christ in Georgetown. As we have journeyed together in ministry and friendship, I've been honored to preach at your ordination service in Robstown. I was privileged to preside at the baptism of your three children. I was grateful that you preached at and assisted with my mother's funeral, and now I'm thrilled to celebrate the 20th anniversary of your ordination. Throughout these 24 years, I've been blessed to watch your gifts for ministry blossom, bloom, and produce like Mustard seed. Mustard seed. Yes. <laughs> Good. There we go. Good, Paul. Produce beautiful fruit for the kingdom of God. I rejoice with you and the church universal today for the work the Holy Spirit has done in you through your years of ministry. In celebration of this occasion, I'd like to share with you something very special to me. Forty years ago this year, I was ordained. I'm going to let Miss Keisha unwrap this while I'm reading. I told Paul, I think I'm going to cry, so I'm going to try not to on this. Uh, for my ordination, my mother, Charlene, made my red stole and hand-embroidered descending doves. On this special occasion, I would like to present that stole to you. 
in thanksgiving for the many times mm, oh, wow. you and your family have shared God's love with Joanne, myself, and our family. Yes, please put that up. May it be a reminder of the power of God's Holy Spirit in your life and in your ministry you do in God's name. God bless you as you celebrate 20 years of ordained ministry. I look forward to the next 20. Thank you, Paul Kropeka. Yeah, man. Wow. That's neat. Wow. That's neat. Donna, you want to... That's neat. That's funny. Now, just so you know. Oh, wow. Yes, hold that up the high. Van Antwerp, so. Hold that wow. up. So, just so you know, I, I didn't lie. I said I'd forgotten. <laughs> Actually, Donna had already been talking, and we'd been thinking when we were going to have our Heritage Sunday meal, we would do something back then, and then COVID came along. So uh, here we are in COVID. We're not having a meal, but wherever you are at home, give a round of applause for Pastor Kevin and Donna and his family. Thank you. And a picture. Oh, let's see. Okay. Oh, yes. It's got everything. We got to hold that up. Uh, get it a little closer, maybe. I don't know. Kira is an artist. Kira is an artist. That's, a, that, that's all favorite superheroes and cartoon characters and uh, video games. And, uh, of course, the Dallas Cowboys on there. That's got to be there. So, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, sweetheart. Thank you. Wow. Uh, truly blessed. Do you want to say anything, or are you ready to preside at communion? Uh, just thank you. I mean, thank you. That's, well, I could say a lot of things, but just thank you. <laughs> I very much appreciate it. Thank you. You bet. All right. I'm going to preside at communion if you want to. Please. All right. I will do that. I'll let you be the official clicker Please. here. <laughs> The rest of the PowerPoint has the rest of your presentation. Right. So Thank we had you. a secret PowerPoint that was called confirmation presentation, so he wouldn't find it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Annabelle, can you give me just a second? I, I think I have managed to collect just a thought or two, if you could. It was just it was, it was overwhelming, folks. And, and, you know, thank you was the only thing that came. But I, I want to say that... 20 years is not possible without first the grace of God because it is only by his power that I can stand and 20 years would not be possible without my wife and my children who are a constant source of support and for friends and family and congregation members it is not possible to do this job alone and I am blessed throughout the years with all the people who I am standing on the shoulders of. And I am blessed to be a part of this congregation who has welcomed me and my family. I'm blessed to be working with Pastor Casey and Keisha and Lane and Margie and Annabelle. And there's too many staff to name here. I'm not used to that. But I am supremely blessed and pray that I may continue to be a blessing if I am such a thing. Thank you again. And may we sing our praises to God and the doxology.
celebrate, rejoice by his grace. We rejoice in his presence forever. Give thanks to the Lord of the heavens. Give praise to the Father of lights. Proclaim it to all generations. For this is the day he has made. Celebrate! Rejoice! Celebrate! Rejoice!